Craig Brumell realized that his career as a policeman was effectively over. The brass wanted him out the door, so he obliged. In 1996, he ran for president of the union and used the scandal as a springboard to power. But Brumell was no fool. He knew he needed help to do the job and started hiring the best lawyers, consultants, and spin doctors money could buy. Once in power, Brumell organized the union like his own private army, demanding complete loyalty from his staff. He and his executive were nicknamed the Men in Black and stood out in a crowd for their look-alike black suits and for their tactics. It was a new breed of police union and things were going to change. One of Brumell's first targets was the SIU, the Special Investigations Unit. It's the civilian watchdog agency that investigates all cases involving the police that lead to death or injury. The police association has um, a lot of power. They protect their officers and provide them with counsel immediately. There's a lot of little technicalities that protects them and loopholes that they can cover under. Sheila McAllister, a former police officer, was an investigator with the SIU for several years. She says that the agency was constantly being outwitted and outmaneuvered by Brumell. This is a joke. I mean, really, you're supposed to have the authority to conduct a, an investigation, take over the investigation, and you're the lead agency in the investigation, and you can't get anybody to cooperate. It almost sounds like the blue wall. Mm -hmm. Set it up, no one talks against their own. And the reason for not cooperating? Well, police witnesses often claim to be so traumatized by the event that they're suffering from post-traumatic stress and therefore can't be questioned. If you were to accept the claims of post-traumatic stress disorder at face value for every shooting that certainly uh, I've acted for families on, uh, you'd, have to, uh, you'd have to face the reality that post-traumatic stress disorder is hitting the city and police officers with epidemic proportion. It has become laughable. Julian Falconer is a prominent Toronto lawyer who's brought a number of civil suits against the police. What Mr. Brumell has quite successfully done is, is ingrain the idea that uh, accountability is a bad thing, SIU is a bad thing, and that the police should be answerable to no one but themselves. If there's a, a wall of silence to protect each other and be a team and stick together, I'm all for it. We have a lot of people trying to nail police officers in the city. Um, no one is out to nail a good police officer. The, That's until, until an allegation comes up. Once the allegation comes up, then the cop is bad. Like everyone else, a police officer has the right to go home to her, his wife, and children every night, just like anybody else, and they do do a tough job. Having said that, don't ever confuse the importance of protecting police officers with the rule of law. The rule of law is about nobody being above the law. The rule of law is about being answerable. In my view, if it were left up to the uh, Craig Brumells and the Toronto Police Associations of this world, we would be as close to a police state uh, as we could possibly be. September 1999, the SIU is called to investigate a shooting in 51 Division, Craig Brumell's home turf. A police officer told him to uh, stop get out of the car, the guy drove at him. So he grabbed onto the side of the car and urged the guy several times in very loud voice to stop the car. And when he refused to do so, he shot him. But he told him he was gonna shoot him if he didn't stop. So that's pretty good notice where I come from. However, SIU investigator Michael McKinnon from Hamilton didn't see it as an open and shut case. The driver was unarmed and McKinnon wanted to know why did the officer draw his gun in the first place, and why didn't he simply jump out of harm's way when the vehicle accelerated? How'd it go? It was all done before. Only okay. The guy from Hamilton thinks uh, he's no busy shooting. He should have had his gun. He should have popped his car. I said to Barry, I charge a guy who's being dragged by a guy in the car. Said, from 51 of them. He said, well, let me talk to him. But you know, this guy in the cage is a stooge. That's a problem. The investigation's over now, so the report should get done in the next week. Then it'll go to prison. 
We don't want Nicky Cherry, I'm telling you right now. I agree. Has this, this guy ever been involved in a takedown? Well, I asked him. What do you say? Has he ever had his gun out when he needed it? <laughs> Let's find out. Hey? So we have to make some, we have to make some, you know, we have to make some backdoor moves. And within days, the SIU would clear the officer of any criminal wrongdoing. The man who cleared the police officer was SIU director Peter Tinsley, a recent appointee of the Mike Harris conservative government. You know, we have to make some backdoor moves there. It looks like your lead investigator wants to lay a charge. And then the police union lawyer, Mr. Cluey, says, hey, we're going to do some moves through the back door, and all of a sudden, there's no charge. It is simply uh, bravado, and I, I do know if there were, you know, I have no idea what he was talking about. But as far as back door moves, there's no such thing as back door moves in my unit or my office. We asked Craig Bromell about this, and he told us, quote, calls were made. And that's all he would tell us. Mr. Brumell just has no idea what he's talking about. Um, it's uh, scurrilous and almost slanderous. Well, I, I think it was more just, uh, I would call it uh, firm reasoning. What uh, does that mean? Well, that means you say to somebody, come on, you know, look at the evidence here. I mean, the guy had no choice and go home and think about it. You're entitled to do that. And uh, that's just advocacy. That's allowed. And uh, I don't think it was anything more than that. I mean, you know, sometimes we, uh, we raise our voice, but it's always polite. When we come back, the men in black go Hollywood. You were told by the LA guys that one way to get instant respect was to take down a mayor or a city councilor. Correct. <laughs> And now we return to the Fifth Estate. Los Angeles, California, the city of the Rodney King police beating and the O.J. Simpson investigation, featuring racist cop Mark Furman. But despite that, the men in black saw something in L.A. worth emulating. They spent a week here last spring picking up pointers from their union brothers. And in L.A., that bad news never seems to stop. This is the CBS Evening News. The city of Los Angeles is reeling from the biggest corruption mess to shake the L.A. Police Department since the 1930s. The FBI has now joined the investigation following allegations of police shootings, frame-ups, cover-ups, and drug dealing. Joseph McNamara was a New York City cop for 18 years and a police chief for 17, and now lectures on policing. The Toronto Police Union seems to think that Los Angeles is some kind of a model for policing. <laughs> well, it's a model, all right. I'm not sure it's one that I'd like to see a police union follow. Uh, and I think the uh, unions have sometimes crossed a line where they've become so militant that they have defeated their own purposes. The public begins to say, well, what's going on here? Uh, these police officers uh, seem to think it's their police department instead of our police department. Did you guys get your MOU survey? Actually, this is one of the reasons That's that we're here. We, came here. Yeah. Yeah. we wanted to come and make sure that the new contract is... Uh, you know, at least they have our input in what's going to be happening and stuff like Gary that. Gary Morgan is head of the L.A. Police Union. He's the guy that taught the boys from Toronto how to handle the levers of power. Craig Bramell says that you gave him a wake-up call. I think, it, I guess classification-wise, that could be called that because we've been involved in the political uh, arena for many years. We will assist politicians in disseminating their uh, information, whether it be by knocking on doors, making phone calls for phone banks. Uh, financially, we support candidates. Just how important is getting the endorsement of the L.A. Police Union? I can only say that everyone that is considering either election or re-election, they come to us for their endorsement. And uh, out of the last election, I think we had 24 out of the 25 winners. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Out, out, out. 
Within weeks of the L.A. visit, Craig Bromell had a chance to put his newly acquired know-how into action. In the Ontario provincial election, the traditionally neutral police union threw its weight behind Mike Harris and the Conservatives. The people in polo shirts are all police officers, here to promote a law and order agenda. And Premier Harris is keen to be their guy. We believe our role is to help support you in every way that we can. Uh, and you've clearly spoken out and told us that uh, we need tougher laws. So we're going to give you stronger tools to help you do your job. Bromel contributed ads, money, and volunteers to the Harris campaign.